You're listening to Turi Writers' She Said What podcast. I'm Turi, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, Marcy has some frightening encounters with the local wildlife. I suggest a trade, my urban wildlife, for hers. And it's not an easy thing to quit smoking. It's especially not easy at Halloween. What a pain in the rear. <laughs> These last 24 hours have been. What happened? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not naming any names. But a certain company decided to do a certain update that blew my computer out. And so uh, after me sitting on YouTube for hours, like watching all these demonstrations on how to make my computer work again, uh huh, understanding any of it, I uh, got my resident 25-year-old to come in the house. They can be useful, those resident 25-year-olds. How's the non-smoking going? I'm still not smoking, and I really, really, really want to. And I offered someone a $1,000 bribe to go get me a pack of cigarettes. And believe it or not, they said okay. And then I said, I don't have $1,000, so never mind. So, no, I still have not smoked. Wow. And I have, like, had two crises with nature in the last 48 hours where I would have run to my pack of cigarettes and lit up and while I screamed and ran all over the property because uh, it's (laughs) for someone who lives in the mountains in the forest there are certain aspects of nature that I do not do uh, do well with Uh like rodents of any kind Uh, are the pack rats back this, this turned out to be like a pack rat with wings. So we're watching, Frankie and I are watching Doom Patrol. And uh, just on the couch. And he said, I think there's a bird in the house. And I was like, what? How could a bird get in the house? And then out of the corner of my eye, I saw something flying. I immediately grabbed a blanket, stuck it over my head, and he got up, and I didn't know what he was doing, because I had a blanket over my head, and every time something swished by me, I would scream. I bet he's, I bet he's torn between whether he should move it outside or just laughing his butt off oh, wait, at you. Wait, wait till you hear. So, okay, so this was him throwing stuff at it. Was it a bat? The door. Was it a bat? Yes, it, it turned out to be a bat. I love bats. I hope he didn't hurt it. Oh, you're not going to like this story, then. Oh, no. No, Frankie did not hurt it. But uh, Derp, who was laying on the floor. The cat? Somehow jumped almost as high as the ceiling and pulled that thing out of the sky. Oh, boy. But then Frankie took it away from Derp and put it outside. So you think it so- might have lived? It wasn't hurt, no. Oh, good. I love bats. I love bats. Not me. Not in my house. No, no, no. Oh, I wish I could have a house full of bats. They're so cute. Uh, Well, the the next one I get. (laughs) Yeah, with with my electric spider ornament that's never going to ever. It's sitting right right here. (laughs) I'm going to send that. Where it'll do me the most good. I'll send it. I'll send it. Of course you will. Along with the bat. Yeah. No, yeah. I love bats. It's one of my great you sadnesses that when I went to camp and they had, would get bats in the cabin. And even though I love them, everybody would be screaming, kill it, kill it, kill it. And I, one smart kid was really distressed by this. And I should have been on her team, but I wanted to be more popular than I was. So even though I loved bats, I joined the kill it, kill it, kill it chorus. And, and I'm filled with shame. It is one of my least proud moments of my entire childhood it still bothers me because i love bats they're lovely things i don't love them in my house well you could you moved it out of your house you they're pretty um, small they can make their way through small apertures so maybe there's i'm gonna be looking i'm on the hunt well don't hurt them brush with nature number two yes so I went out to the front deck. Frankie was sitting on the front deck. Um, Smoking. 
Yes, he was smoking. Yes. And I was going over to my side of the deck to the no smoking area. Uh Uh-huh. And, of course, the dog, you know, the little bulldog runs out with me, Belly. And she starts to, she's just hanging out. And all of a sudden, she, like, jumps. And Frankie said, there must be a cat underneath the deck. Because I just heard it hiss. Ooh. And both of my cats were inside. Uh, sleeping. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Um, and she was totally backed up. And she wouldn't come near the deck. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this big old snake comes slithering out from underneath my deck. And of course, I had to run around and scream because it was way far away from me. But <laughs> there's the fact that I saw it. And I was sure it was like a rattlesnake or a python or something that was going to eat my dog. My little stout bulldog. (laughs) I didn't get eaten by the snake. But Frankie said it had no rattle. At this point, though, I don't know whether to believe him or not, because I know he's going to lie to me. (laughs) Is is he going to leave it be and let it go into its on to live its life peacefully or, or what? I ran in the house and took the dog, and uh, no, Frankie thinks it was just wanted to lay out in the sun. Okay, so it's okay now. He didn't harm the snake either. No, no, we didn't harm anything. Oh, it all good. just harmed me. Yeah, well, it harmed my psyche. I don't I want to sleep. hear how much you love living in the country if you don't like all the crap that's in the country. I live in the city, and I would be happy, happy. I would trade you some drug addicts nodding off on my corner and a couple of people shooting for your rattlesnake and and your bats any day. I'll send you a box of snakes and bats. And I'll send you some Narcan and the local, uh, the local populace representative. I mean, look, I, I understand that they're ill. I understand all of that, but the point where you're whizzing on my car is, the part where I or my seat I, we can't take the uh, don't get me started just here have a homeless person I'm sorry yeah. not not a homeless person our houseless neighbors you know what they say houseless out here too and I don't understand the difference would you like to explain that to me well they make What's their, the yes, I will explain what's been explained to me. And I, I want you to know that this is not my definition. This, this is what has been explained to me by the various advocacy groups, which we have way more of here in the city than you have there up on the mountain near the Grand Canyon. They right. have, they have homes. Their home just may happen to be in a community of other houseless people under the viaduct. Their home may happen to be a bench in the park. Their home may happen to be the bus stop that they've entirely barricaded with shopping carts and tents and bags of stuff that you don't want to know what's in them. That's their home. They're not homeless. They're houseless. So how dare I complain that the entire bus stop reeks of pee and I can't get near it in the pouring rain? That is the home of my houseless neighbor. And we'll then move up here with the bats and the snakes. We, we don't we don't have any uh, um at least for at least these fifteen acres that I'm looking at. I'll tell you what the difference is. I, I enjoy most interactions with my unconventionally mentally equipped neighbors, but you do not have any fun with your challenged men- mentally neighbors no. at all but if mine are way more pleasant their, we don't knock on their gates with the skull and crossbones and the american flag not the american flag but the american flag that's different i know yes. yeah it's different <laughs> so yeah i i can interact quite peaceably with most of my unhoused neighbors i do have to run a gauntlet to get to the park that runs along the lake and you have to choose, do I want the traffic speeding by or do I want to wade through the the little enclave of my unhoused neighbors? But um, and, and if you want to know the truth, I often risk getting hit by a car. But but <laughs> don't have to worry about that. up here. No, no, no one's going to hit me with a car up there. Uh, they, I may very well die. It's a it's a would you rather every time you want to go see the lake. Yeah. Would you rather? Walk through the community of your unhoused neighbor 
or would you rather be hit by a car that's supposed to be doing 30 to get to the beach but is instead going 55 what well, you you choose yeah well i i can all i can give you another blessing but a curse yeah living up here yeah we have, we have never had a trick-or-treater come to our house well and that's that's kind of the blessing because it doesn't drive the dogs nuts and we don't have to answer the door yeah the curse is however yeah that we eat all the candy i i bought the costco Twenty dollar bag of chocolate, Snickers and Reese's and M and M's and Three Musketeers and Twizzlers, Twix and Kit Kats, and I had it on the counter for several days, unopened. And I, I, it called me. Actually, I was watching TV quietly at late one night, and I felt it calling me, and I, I refused. I refused, and so then. Yes. Open me. Open. Open. I feel like the handmaid's tale. May the Lord open. Somebody just accidentally opened this giant bag of So what I decided to do was move the entire bag to the storage area that's at the back of the coat closet where we keep things like giant boxes from Costco with forty five cans of diced tomatoes, right? But that required touching the bag. Uh oh. I touched the bag. It was like Did Lot's magic wife. Open? It was yeah, yeah, the Lord opened. It was magic. I touched the bag and something came over me. And before I even realized what had happened, it was five fun sized peanut M and M's. I I was holding the wrappers. And Two miniature. Why do they call them fun size? There's nothing fun about it. It those tiny little like five M M&M and M bags are just an exercise in frustration and fury. You get all the guilt of opening the bag, none of the pleasure of a satisfactory amount of M and M's, and then you have to repeat the whole thing over again. And by the time exactly. you've actually had what you'd get at the you know corner store, a normal portion of M and M's, you're They're you're practically blind. crying because it's five little fun size bags of peanut M&M's and you feel like a moose. Our, our, our big problem here is that there's only there's only three humans that eat candy and sugar. Fourth human is healthy and just has no interest in sweets, which makes a very good property mate or whatever. But the other three fight over who ate all the candy. I remember but this. Ate all the good candies. I remember. Always, never me. Never me. Never me. <laughs> you did it. No, she did it. No, I don't. No, did it. And it, it always comes down to, you know, one of the cats or dogs, maybe the bat. Definitely not the snake out front. <laughs> I don't know. But yes, this is the danger zone. And now on top of like, you know, being in danger, danger, candy warning area, because we have Halloween. Then we have Thanksgiving, and then we have Christmas, and I'm not smoking. <laughs> so all I want to do is fill my mouth with, with Twizzlers and Reese's and Hershey's and whatever else I can get my grubby little hands on. Then I can just feel myself gaining weight. No, no. Yes, I do. No. I feel it. How did the cinnamon stick treatment go? Um. Well, I'm still doing that, but right now, like, as you <laughs> mentioned earlier, I like six pieces of gum in my mouth, mm. but I, I have not, anytime I want to smoke, I go find something to do. My, there are very clean corners in my house. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go, oh, I haven't looked at this stuff for a real long time, and then I'm like, what the heck is this stuff? So we're making a big dump run this weekend, thanks to my not smoking. Well, praise be to crib another line from The Handmaid's Tale. I never knew it would be so useful. Congratulations. Assuming you've come this far because you enjoy the podcast, may we recommend my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air. It's available at your neighborhood bookstore or on Amazon. And if you're feeling especially generous, please leave the podcast a good review. Thanks.